welcome everyone. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for joining. And welcome, Dr. Sandy. Thank you. How are you today? <laughs> awesome, sir. Awesome. You're welcome, sir. So, uh, we're ready to dive in because we have a couple of questions today. And we're ready to learn as much as possible. I am really ready to learn. <laughs> and I believe our viewers are also ready to learn from today's episode. So, uh, Pastor, the first question here is, does our dreams have an effect in our lives? Should we ignore them or be frightened by them or cancel every bad thing we dream? Cancel uh, the last phrase, please. Cancel every bad thing we dream. Cancel. Cancel it. Okay. Yeah. Um. There are three things you must understand about dreams. Number one, don't ever take every dream as a signal from God or from Satan. Dreams are normal and are neutral. That is the first thing you must know. So don't attach any meaning to your dreams immediately. The second thing you must know is that Satan uses dreams to manipulate us. So a lot of dreams will be coming from Satan to derail you. The third thing you must know about dreams is that sometimes God also uses dreams to direct you. So if you know those three things, it will, be, it will help you. But I put them in accordance to their relevance. And importance. Amazing. <laughs> well, wow, that's that's a very good that's a very good one. Why? Because it gives gives understanding. To I'm not me. sure that it won't hurt me. So you want so I'll repeat it. All right. So the first thing is that that you should know about dreams is that dreams are natural and they are neutral. So don't attach um importance, I mean immediately to every dream that you get. So that's the first thing. And that's the most important thing. And that's the most important thing. That dreams are natural, dreams are neutral. They are biological processes. Yeah. So, so uh, it happens. That's the first and the most important. Second don't attach and don't attach importance to, to every them. dream. Yeah. yeah. Most of them just forget about just it. forget about them. Then the second one is that the devil he uses dreams to derail us, to distract us. And for those dreams, same thing, forget about them. Uh, and if it's, if it's no, something... No, I didn't say what to do with those things. Yeah. I just said that's the second thing. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll go next. Okay, so second one is the devil sends in dreams, uh, true dreams to, to derail us. And then the third one is that sometimes God... Through our dreams, gives us directions. Gives us directions. So those are the three. Um, and that is the and that's the list of the three. So I'll go. I'll go again from the beginning so that you guys can get it. So the first one is not every every dream that we have is natural and it's neutral. It's a biological process. And we should do forget about and, yeah, and we should do attach importance to them. Forget about it. And that's the most important thing that we all must know about dreams. Then the second in relevance and in importance is that, that the devil sends in dreams or through our dreams derails us. So pastor will tell us what we're going to do with, with those. And then the third one, and this is the least important, is that God sometimes through our dreams gives us direction. So these are the three things that you must know about dreams. So the next question that I know you are asking and I am also asking is that we already know what to do about the first one, which is the most important one. Forget about it. So what about the second and the third? Okay, the, fir the first one, forget about it, meaning that 80% of all your dreams will be in that category. Yeah. In the category of the first one. First one which is things that you don't you don't pay attention to, just forget. Uh, another 10% of, of, of the, all your dreams will be in the second category, which is uh, where Satan is trying to come to manipulate and derail you. 
what you do if you know that it is sure for, for Satan, the first thing to do is to ignore it. Don't even pay attention, forget it. The second thing to do is if you feel some threat or some danger, stand on the authority of the, the word of God and your position in Christ and cancel it. Cancel that dream, bury it, forget about it. The third thing you could do about it is to examine it, to try to, uh, you know, figure out in what maybe it's a message you could, or a caution you might want to pay attention to. You might want to, you know, take some measures or you might want to warn somebody that is in that same third, in the, that same second category. Wow. So there are three things to do there. Great. Okay, so let me repeat it so our viewers, me, I'm, I'm paying every attention. And if you're still here with Dr. Sandy, <laughs> you have to be in the here and now. <laughs> because it's so good to get you if you're lost, if you're daydreaming. Yeah, so let me say the three things that we have to do with the second category. The first one is that, I mean, there are three, three responses and 80% of um, those dreams, you should forget about them. Forget about it. Then the second one, that's the 10 percent, is that if it's something that threatens you or something that you are probably afraid about uh, and you're not comfortable with it, stand in your authority in Christ and cancel them, bury them and forget it. That's the second thing you should do. And then the third thing that you should do, which might be 10 percent of your dreams in the second category, is that it might be something that you should, I mean, it might be giving you um, a direction as to something you should be cautious about. Well, Satan will not give you direction, but at least it will, you, you will have You will get it, yeah. If, if it's a danger, so you might want to... Uh, be cautious about Yeah, it. be cautious about some things or take some measures. Yeah. Or maybe concerning your loved Somebody, one. Somebody, yeah. So that's the third one. So it's maybe from the dream... You could deduce that, okay, maybe I have to be cautious about something. I have to um, tell, I have to maybe caution someone or I have to make, take some measures uh, from the dream that you got. So that is it. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Then the third level. The third level of dream is when God, that God does speak mm -hmm. through dreams to us. But that's just 10% of all your dreams as well. Uh, and some people, some people might have it more than that, but... Most of the time, it's between you know, it's not going to bother fifty percent of your dreams, that you know. But mainly, let's just say ten percent, where you know it will be God speaking to you. Uh, in those cases, what you want to do is first of all to take your time and meditate to understand what God is trying to tell you. Secondly, uh, you want to know what to do with it, either to pray about it or to act on it. And thirdly. The thing you want to do is to know if God is trying to tell somebody something for you. Mm -hmm. Give instruction to someone through. Let me repeat that for you so that you guys will understand that this is I mean this is like a book. Like how to how to interpret your dreams or something, how what to do with your dreams. Well it's amazing. <laughs> All right, so now let's say you get this dream. I mean the third category where um God is speaking to you through your dreams. So what's the first thing that you should do? Take your time. Meditate on it to understand um, co completely what God is trying to tell you. So that's the first thing you should do. Take your time, meditate, and understand what God is trying to pass across to you. Then the second response, after you've taken your time, is to the second is to ask yourself: Is this something I should pray about, or something I should act on immediately? That's the second thing you should ask yourself. Okay, I got this dream. Should I pray about it or should I act on it? That's the second one. Then the third response is for you to, I mean, it's when God is maybe using you to pass a message across to another person. So you're just a channel. So, I mean, he gives you the dream about someone else, about something, and you're to be a channel to pass a message across to someone. So this is so comprehensive, Pastor. And I think this can just give, I mean, I mean, it just gives answers to everyone about your dream. So you just know exactly what to do when you get this dream. So you are asking question, how do I... So the question... Comprehensive or... Yeah, I mean, how are you able to... I mean, how are you able to... You know, you know how you like systematically and classify everything that you for these, there are three types of dreams. For each of these three types... Yeah, percentages. Yeah, you, you have percentages for them. And then... 
you have categories of responses like <laughs> is it something you like you sat down and then figure out i don't know how did you get to how did you get this this um conclusion well there is no way i, I could have gotten to that conclusion if i didn't know the question you were going to ask yes so it's impromptu wow but uh, did you tell me the question no I, I, i'm thinking look i'm asking because i'm thinking maybe it's something that you had known before and then you had already gotten answers to so do that that's that's one that's the first option and that is something that you i mean you've, you've already someone has asked you before and you already figured it out so you're just telling me out of what you figured out or it's just spontaneous something that okay out of the, the bank of knowledge that you have and it's spontaneous Wow. I don't know if anybody asked me the question before. Even if they asked me, maybe I would have given out the answer. It sounds spontaneous. But because of the way my mind is set up, I've trained my mind and myself to think systematically. Yeah. You no, know, I was coming today, and that was one thing I was I was thinking about too. That one of the things that I actually come to here to do is to learn and to see how you think, how you process things. Yeah, because when I ask you questions, you take time, and then you, I mean, your, the way you process information, and then the way you answer, I mean, you answer in such a way that it's like, that's just the answer. I mean, just go and take the answer and sit down. No, you don't need to ask anybody in the world again about that question. Yeah, because all of the answers you need for that question are offered them to you. So comprehensive. So you don't need to run, ask any other person. I'm giving you the answer. That's all. That's all you need. But that's, I mean, that's something that, well, thank God I'm pleased. That's why I'm always uh, concerned and worried and broken and disappointed when I see politicians or leaders or pastors who don't maximize their mind mm. who do, or their spirit or their relationship with God. So the answers that you are talking about, they, they are coming not just from what I already know, mm. they're coming from my relationship with God. So I'm being led by the Spirit. I'm hooked to the Holy Ghost, to heaven. So not just hooked to my subconscious mm -hmm. bank of information. Wow. So there are three things that are in preparation. Okay. So can you repeat it, sir? Okay. Three one, things. one is uh, uh, what, you know, my bank of knowledge, what yeah. I already know. Yeah. Second is the ability to uh, process and format you know, the knowledge you have into mm. groups and categories. Okay. To be able to know where, how to draw out and how to place it. Mm -hmm. You know, third is the combination of, uh, you know, my interaction with the Holy Spirit, friendship with the Holy Spirit, and being able to be led by the Spirit to know what department of your subconscious mind you go to, mm. to get that information and how to relate. You have to be guided by, it's like a laser, uh, projector that is guiding you to you have to be under the supervision of the Holy Spirit. Wow. That's what it says, those that are led by the Spirit, Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God has to lead you to be able to you know remember what you have in your background information mm -hmm. in the subconscious mind mm -hmm. and then you know to be able to extract to be able to know what category to go to, what group, what department, and to be able to know what particular answer needs to be given at this particular time. To really work to work so in there are three things. three things yeah wow great well dear viewers i'm sure that you are i mean we're just just less than 20 minutes into today's show and i'm sure you guys are already learning and you're you're, you're understanding dr sunday more and you're, you're understanding how he thinks how he processes and this is something that we also can learn from and we can also imbibe and um, I mean, this is actually this. You're you're sharing the secrets of what people would refer to as. I mean, they see you as a superhuman. Like, how does he even do it? How does he think? How does he? Who, I mean, what is the process behind the what is coming your product? And this is what I'm learning from you. I mean, how you're able to get things together. I mean, it's amazing. Well, after he okay, while I was coming today. Um, I was thinking about how pastor really processes information because I mean I've, I've anchored this show a couple of times and I ask a question I'm moving while I'm asking a couple of times yeah a couple of times yeah. I mean that's like uh, maybe that's not the right word to use yes okay <laughs> a number of times yeah could mean no exact 
Okay, all right. But a couple of times. Like two? Yeah, two couple ah. of times, four times. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I'm like, I use no, I, I use them interchangeably. Yeah, I use number yeah. of time and couple of times. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a good thing to learn. So, um, like I, as I was saying, so I, I was coming and I was thinking about how pastor processes information, and um, question, and I. He, and then he gave the answer in a very systematic way. I mean, a systematic approach. Uh, he broke it down into categories and then the responses and everything like that. So I asked him the question that, Pastor, okay, this answer that you gave, was it something that you had already, I mean, answered before this question or was it spontaneous? And then that was how he gave um, the, it, it broke down the, yeah, he, he broke down how he actually processes information and how he gives answers to the questions or to, I mean, just how, how he processes information, basically. And then he said that, number one... Is, that's what was bothering you. Yeah, that's what was bothering me. I wanted to know how you do it, yeah. And then you broke it down... Is there anything special about it? Um, it's, 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 not, it's not new, but it's just how to um, make that your, your life. I mean, how to make that part of you. Because I know that definitely there should be a bank of knowledge. There should be something in your subconscious mind. That's something I know. And also, it's something I know that when you ask the question, you need to figure out which, which part you understand to get your answer from. And working with the Holy Spirit, being led by the Spirit, is something that I'm not new to. But I'm talking about how this can become you in such a way that it's not you don't you don't just do it sometimes but it's something that you, i mean it's already part of you and you need to even struggle so what is not new we know so what is new then? so what so what is new right now is how you've been able to integrate the knowledge this knowledge that, that is not new to me and how you've made it part of you and you're functioning you're functioning seamlessly with it in such a way that I mean, How does that come across? Why do you should we even think about that? Why should that question even come to? Yeah, it comes to me because uh, an average person, when an average person is asked a question like this, you don't get a comprehensive answer like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you know you said it earlier that I mean it it, it it really makes you sad or cry when you hear pastors or politicians not being able to maximize their mind because that's what you're talking about. All of this is just being able to love God with your mind and your soul, like you used to teach us how to your heart. with your heart, how to maximize your mind and your soul. So, I mean, this is you maximizing your, your heart, maximizing your mind. And this is what we do, most people don't do. So, for example, if you ask an average person this question, just it's okay, so what do you do to your dreams? Um, just maybe sometimes pray and sometimes cancel it or sometimes forget about it. And that's pretty much what the person would say. But look at how you, I mean, you broke it down to three categories, percentages, responses. So, I mean, it's, it's not like a chat someone can just have in his house. Maybe someone that has been battling with dreams and the person has been like, oh, I have these bad dreams every time. Let's just need to just get all of these things that we talked about today. Draw a chat and just look at it and look okay, this, I had a dream today, so where does it belong? Okay, it belongs to the first category, it belongs to the That's why we must write the book, the mind shift. It's all, <laughs> it's it's all on me, right? <laughs> but first, all of this is still under my yeah, sheet. Yeah, it's collected. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Well, first of <laughs> we have a lot of things to do. I mean, a lot of catching up. <laughs> a, a lot well, of you have a lot of time to catch up. You are young. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you think about the fact that uh, I am two times your age, my age is twice your age, yes. at least. So that means that uh, you can understand okay. that, yes. Uh, yes, that you don't have a problem. By the time you have two times time mm. and you work with the same intensity that I work, then you will probably the same result. There's hope. Yes. Wow. I'm going to try my best. Thank you so much. For but your own, you are supposed to do better than me because uh, 
or most of the things that you hear from me, you I don't know where one place I could direct you to, mm. where you could get them. Yeah. Almost impossible. And I, I had the, I had, I had that experience actually the early hours of today, because I was listening to, to um, some past messages where you had you invited some big men of God to your anniversary, Kumuyi and all of them. I was listening to, to him what he was preaching about. He was talking about authority, and what he was talking about was what I've preached before. So, so sincerely, I was going to say this to I, I didn't know I was going to say this online. <laughs> I was going to say this to you privately. That, I mean, I had to just keep. Yeah, because what he was saying was something, I mean, the examples he was only giving were the examples I've given before, too. But I had to skip him, and then... And he is one of the best of teachers. Of the best teachers. Uh, so he is one of the most thorough. Yeah, and this is Pastor Kumi. Yeah. But I couldn't... He's one of the very, very best. Yes, but I couldn't even continue. But everybody talked the same thing. The same thing. I mean, the example that he gave... Was an example that I had given before when I was preaching on sort of authority. The place of learning. The way of learning. So that I just had to move, and then I moved to another message where you were teaching on grace and apostleship. And right from the beginning, I started learning something new. Right from the first second. <laughs> I'm not joking. So I, I mean, it's just amazing how. It's like Pastor Sunday and the rest of they are just on yeah. the, from another planet. I did. I didn't know I was going to see this here. Actually, I said I was going to just have a chat with you when we have our time together. That this is what I actually experienced just the early hours of this morning. That I mean, it's just yeah. Many people say that once we begin to listen to the essay, that they say they cannot even listen to. It's difficult. It's difficult to listen to other people because I mean the the content is different, the substance is different. I mean, it's like every time you're listening, you're going deeper. I mean, you, I mean, you're increasing in knowledge. The scripture you're teaching from today about grace and apostasy was something that I have thought about being a pastor, I've learned about, but I've never seen it in that perspective. I've never gotten understanding about it in that, I mean, that light. And this is just like 10 minutes into the beginning of your message, you started teaching that. And this message was preached? 2004. <laughs> 2004. So not yesterday. No. 2004. 14 years ago. 14 years ago, even more than that, because we're in 2017, 18 now. That's what 14 years ago. 2004, so he's on YouTube. And he's still fresh. He's still fresh, new, I mean, sound. As if it's just hot coming from heaven. I'm telling you. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, well, like you said, I mean, thinking about the fact that you're twice my, I believe I can, I have what I mean. Because, because yeah, time. just because only, the only reason why you have that chance is because you are close by me yes. now. Together with me, so you are going to be learning directly from the from the tip of the iceberg. I mean, from the very deep, mm -hmm. from the very source of yes, the the greatest thing that's out there. True. But if, like you are talking about Pastor Kumi or or Adeboye or Ayo yeah. or Chris or Yakilo, they are older than me, all of them. But uh, they don't have any chance anymore to even know what you are, what you know already. Mm -hmm. True. So it's not age. Yeah. It's not just the fact that you are younger. But the the exclusion. Where you are fitting from. Yeah, that's so true. Well, and the amazing thing is that, dear viewers, you also have that opportunity, and there is no pastor that I am aware of that has enough resources free on the internet as Pastor Sunday. Most would <laughs> either sell their. I mean, they are not selling what is not even so thick. I mean, yes, I mean, to, with all respect to them, but you go to Sunday at the larger official YouTube, you're going to be drunk <laughs> with knowledge. Or drowned. Or drowned with it. In, in, in the ocean. You're going to, I mean, just, I mean, you could just do that, that every day, I mean, if you take every day and you listen to one message every day, you will not exhaust it in, in, in years. <laughs> yeah, in years. Because there's so much free, free information that has so much insight, so deep understanding. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to Sunday at Delaja official YouTube page and start immersing yourself into this knowledge. Every subject is worth listening to. As a matter of fact, everything the pastor talks about. This is the principle that I've learned from him, and I'm, I'm trying my best to work on it. And Pastor's principle is that if he picks any subject and talks about it, 
there is nobody in history that has talked about it in the, in the way he will talk about it. And there is no one living right now that would be able to exhaust that subject as he would do that. And even after he's gone, there is no one that will be able to talk about that. So you can imagine, and I know that because I've been with him, I know how he prepares for the, I mean, the presentation and his teaching. So I understand the thorough job that he's done. So guys, I would advise you to please don't miss out on this. Go to Sunday at the larger official YouTube and start drowning in the plethora of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from Dr. Sunday, free of charge, without pay. I mean, you could learn so much and maximize your life, maximize your time with it. You know, uh, as we are talking, I'm thinking maybe pastors have now become like uh, music musicians. Because I remember when I used to like music or listen to music, mm -hmm. you will listen to one. They used to they used to just pay a, lay uh, emphasis on the hit song. Mm -hmm. So that hit song is what they are repeating, 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 and uh, you know propagating and advertising. So, but you will associate that hit song to them to their identity. Yeah. Say, okay, this is uh, you know, Mark Jackson. Yeah. Then you want to go and buy, then they name that hit song the title of the album. Mm -hmm. So you want to go and quickly buy the album. Yes. And in the album, there are always 10 songs. <laughs> so you start listening to the other nine. <laughs> Bad <day. laughs> Bad news, true. Bad because you are thinking that ah, if this person can sing this, this one, everything would be like that. Mm -hmm. I think pastors are becoming like that. That's true. That's true. So, 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 right. so what you are talking is yeah. that everything, everything, pastors, the DSA speaks about is like everything is what listed. Is, Even what listed is like everything is a block, blockbuster. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a classic one. I mean, it's any topic, any topic. But the most of the people you listen to, maybe one is good, then the another one, another one is not good, another one is average. And even get, it gets a time where, when, when the one that, I mean, they are good in this subject, but you've, I mean, they're just repeating what they've said. So there's something new. <laughs> I mean, it's caught your attention the first time they said it. But they begin to repeat themselves. And they repeat, and you're like, I, like I've heard this before. You're like somebody called me yesterday and said, Pastor <laughs> Sunday said I was going to teach on one song less in love mm -hmm. and he said i'm going to teach on love for one month i said ah how <laughs> what one month what is he talking about yeah how can he teach on love for, for one, one month, month. You know, of course he's going to be repeating himself mm -hmm. of course it's going to be just saying the same thing over and over and over again he does not know you that's right then he said but i listened to this by one month i'm listening like this something that i don't want it to finish yeah. Second month, I think what they did to continue, they did it over, over, over two months and it, every day is new. Yeah. But I had to stop it, not because I finished, I just had to stop it because so that I have no more people. Catch up. And every day is new. Every day is new. And it's that like you've never had it, any topic like that. <laughs> I mean, Pastor, there was one time I actually wept when I was listening to, to you. Because for me, I was like, how, how would someone know, like, I mean, how would you... How would someone? I was that day. I was just thinking that how would you know so much? How would you be? I, could, I mean, I couldn't just hold back because you. I mean, you were giving answers to something that I was like, I was in my room there in Lviv. How can a human being? How would you? Like every time you're uttering, you're speaking, you're not. I mean, it's just something new, something fresh, something to learn. You're not like okay, pastor. I know this. Move on. Uh, <laughs> it's my, a mistake. Yeah, oh, Pastor, I, uh, Pastor, what you're saying now, I mean, something I already know, so can we move to the next thing? Wait, Pastor, if you do that, you're making a big yeah. mistake. You can never say you even know, you, I mean, that like, you know what you're saying. You no, know? <laughs> because every time you're sharing something, you're like, is there, there's something new about it. There's something you're learning. I mean, it's just mind-blowing, Pastor. So what made you weep? I, I mean, I think that day, I was, I was blown away. I was... I was in awe, that's just in it. At the knowledge of the, yeah, the I was depth. With the depth of what you were showing. I was literally in awe that, ah, 
you know that kind of. I mean, I just got to that point that ah, I had to just post the video. Hey, human being. Ah, how would? I mean, I've been listening to you, and yet you're still. I'm just and that's sort of the game that you're sharing on, and it's still so deep. It's still so. I mean, insightful. I'm like, how would someone be so so knowledgeable about things like that? So I mean, it just moved me to. Ah, I'm like, okay, man. Let me just continue listening and I keep on learning. No, but almost everybody you hear who said they have been listening to this, they say they, that happened to them. Like they just weep. They, they just shut down. They just begin to weep and cry. And in fact, I have somebody right now in this hall, sitting there in that present here now, only we cannot show you yeah. the program, yeah. who flew in from England without even writing me email. He didn't even have time to write email. <laughs> <laughs> that was coming. Wow. He, didn't even, he couldn't even write me. He didn't even write me, but he jumped up. He was listening, listening. He just got the <laughs> ticket. He just got the wow. airline wow. ticket to give Ukraine. Wow. And then I was, you know, helping my wife in the house doing some, to do some things. Then I, the security was telling me that somebody here wow. from England that flew in three hours and visited in, in, in here wow. waiting for you. I said, I'm not, nobody warned me that I'm supposed to have a visitor. So when I, I finished and I came to see, he said, Pastor, I did it. I just <laughs> I just said, I can't he said, who do I have doubts that? I, but I, I didn't want this man, no. I didn't tell me anything. Will he receive me? He said, but things I've been listening, from what I know, I know this man is different. He's not going to keep me away like yeah. the protocols yeah. and yeah. that. Like, because from the person I know, yeah. this man, he, he even if I just go, he will, will yeah, he will accept, he will not reject for it. Oh. It's, it's, so that's how the bell was moved. He said, no, he just got the ticket and flew. <laughs> yeah, and I can understand. And if people, if I mean, if people had the means to do that, they're going to do that. Yeah, if people, if have, people the have the money. money. If people have the means, they're going mm -hmm. to fly in and... Randomly. I mean, just come and say, see, yes, yeah, I'm going to sit down close to I'm telling you, if people have the means, I'm sure the viewers, they're like, if they have people have the means, I won't come and sit down. In the, uh, in the first thing he said, he, he, said he, he, he flew in first, the first time, I said, I want to even find out, is it really true, this, this guy exists, and what he does, and what he has done, is it really true, is it authentic, can it be verified? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can't understand where it's coming from, and that's because of, I mean, how, how you've been able to work on yourself and make, make yourself valuable. One thing you said to me that, I mean, last week, myself and Victor were here, we were asking you some questions, and you were like, because we're talking about some plans that we have for masters and things like that, and you were like, at some point you're like you don't want to do this master's program and you said that you make sure that you worked on yourself that you'll be more valuable than any and even the professors that are going to give me you don't have get yeah. yeah then you i mean that's what you said I'm, I'm i went back home thinking about it because i'm, I'm at the stage where i need to make some decisions right now and i'm like Look at what this is said he said he worked on himself so much added value to himself so much that i mean even the P, the orders of the PhDs and those people that call themselves professors, it's going to be more valuable than them. They come to learn, to carry to by learn. Bible by Bible, to be able to learn yeah, something. Yeah. That's, that's my... Uh, I mean, the, the people who finish from Harvard and, yeah. you know, Kennedy School of Government, they come in to say, we've never heard this. Mm -hmm. Nothing close. And I listen to Harvard graduates, I listen to all the things they call, they do some, some people do TED, TED talk, and yeah. TED talk, and then you listen to Harvard people, and other uh, sc schools. Mm -hmm. people, I said, everybody who is lucky to listen to DSA is already surpassed all those people. Wow, and that's true, and that's true. I mean, that is, that is very, very true. That is very, very true. Thank you, Pastor, for, I mean, for knowing so much, and freely giving out of the wealth of your wisdom because there are people that don't even know up to I mean they don't have they don't even know any I mean just a tip of what you know and I mean they are all like okay I'm, I know all and things yeah, like some that. people even come to write comments and say that it's a fool yeah. this guy this Sunday is a fool he doesn't know what he's he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's what they say he doesn't even know what they say yes 
And then I read another comment one day. Somebody said, this guy, what is he doing on the internet every day, 24 hours? I mean, he's so, he's so ignorant. And, you know, but he just opens his mouth anyhow. And talk, 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 talk so every time. Mm -hmm. As if even about what he doesn't know anything. Even when he doesn't know anything about what he's talking. Okay, mm -hmm. I said, well, thank so, God. Thank God. They, they don't know you. They're ignorant, that's why. <laughs> Our item was in that. I was in that category of people to when I first went to you. So he's ignorant. Because you said? Yeah, because I was like, no, faster is an error. I'm like, this man doesn't know what he's saying. I mean, just, he doesn't know what he's saying. How are you making this kind of... Uh, statement, yeah. But when, but anyone that takes his time to sit down and listen to just one video, I mean, just just one, video. yeah, any subject, just one, random, any subject, <laughs> random, random. I mean, <laughs> you have to be so confident to say that. Yeah, random. I, I mean, I'm saying that to anybody. Just go some that larger official. Just any, any, just any message. Just any random message. Anything you're talking about, <laughs> religion, politics, anything. In any any subject, any video, I mean, I learned so much from one of your. I mean, I've, I've really exhausted a lot of things in your YouTube channel. There's this your daily word you used to do, but you don't do it now. We are, we are, we are pretty young at that time. Daily word, and I mean, you're like maybe ten minutes, but even the ten minutes, there's still something I'm learning new. <laughs> and that, I'm, I'm, the those, some of them are ten minutes. Some of them are even three minutes. three minutes. And that is like the daily what you, you used to do like 10, 15, 15 years, years ago. Like just come and just share some daily things there. And still profound, deep stuff. Not opening the Bible, not yeah, just no, talking. Just talking. I mean, it's, it's on YouTube. People, really, really. Just, people just need to go and check that YouTube channel. Viewers, <laughs> this needs to be asked as past the Sunday show. <laughs> no, but people actually write me later on yes. that they like it more because they are not here, mm. that you people are here. That when we have free flow discussion like that, it, they, it's like they are here themselves. Ah, okay. It's like you are opening the curtain mm. to behind the scene. Wow. That what they would have desired to you know. Yeah. You will see, even when you read finish reading the comment, you will see that that's what that will be part of feeling, right? Yeah. So they are not uh, angry that you are not reading question, question, question. That too mechanically. True. But people want to know what is what is how is this man? Who is this man? Yeah. Yeah. Great. And that, and I, I think, and th I, that is actually what people really want to know. Yes. Yeah, because they're not. People through the question, that's what the other. They want to know, true. And that's and that's very true. That is very very true, because many people they really desire they can be here and they I can ask some of these questions mm -hmm. and see what is happening and things like that, and that is very true. And uh, well, Pastor. You are saying something. You you talk about. You are about to say something. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was about I was about to tell to tell the viewers okay. that I mean. This is just this is just something that you don't want to. I mean, but you remember Pastor said it once that anyone that is living in this time and in as this generation. In this generation and has not listened to DSA. to DSA, I mean that's a very huge disservice. I mean that's loss. that's a huge loss. Why? Because I mean the the wealth of knowledge insights. That you're going to gain for, by listening to just one message, just one. I mean, you might not find this in any any other place. For the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. <laughs> and that's the truth on any subject, Pastor. <laughs> on any subject. And that's the amazing thing about your YouTube official. I mean, your page on on YouTube. Those are there are different subjects. In, I okay. mean, different things. You're not just talking about religious subjects. Okay. Where you're talking about faith. Love and all these things. You're talking about different things. Why am I here? Why Earth? Um, families. You have family series. Mm -hmm. You have love series. You have. Um, I mean, just anything. Any about it. laws of money. You can learn that. Self confidence. You learn that. Today I was looking at your book today, and I'm like, because I was I was arranging the books, and I'm like, look at all what you've written. I mean, this is nothing because I know I'm with you. This is nothing. But I'm looking at what you've written. And I was thinking about it that ah, ah, all of this just tied to the loan. Just tied to the loan. Not even I'm not talking about the content of the book, but just <laughs> you understand? Just Nazwani. Just Nazwani. <laughs> Nazwani. Nazwani. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
just the title because I was carrying the books. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was carrying the books from this table to the other table, and I'm not looking at just the titles. And I'm like, this. And one thing I noticed while I was carrying is that these are different subjects. This is not just religious books like how to how to be like David, how to the fate of of Paul and Abraham. No, this time politics, Nigeria, philosophy, philosophy, and psychology, like, psychology, everything, business, finances, government, government. International relations. In any subject, actually. Anything and everything. Anything and everything. So, if, I mean, if you are not, if you are not listening to Dr. Sunday, I'm telling you the truth. It's a huge loss. Because what you learn with Dr. Sunday in one year, I'm telling you, hmm. you might not have learned it for over, I mean, 20 years or, you might not have learned it till you die. That's the truth. Mm. You might not need to eat, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, I mean, emphatically, and I know exactly what I'm saying. I know exactly what I'm saying. I know what is out there from the best sources. Because, I mean, before I met you, I used to listen to a lot of people too, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, I listen to a lot of people, I mean, not just religious people, even in the world, secular people, the Tony Robbins, the, um, the Maxwell, and all of them. Those are the guys that people refer to as, I mean, these guys are intellectually up there. But, I listen to you and I'm like... Yeah, when I listen to them, I just say, yeah, people have not listened yet. Yeah. So, I mean, so informative. You know, before I started having all these messages in English, mm -hmm. I used to hear what these people talk about and all this, you know, in, in America, America has taken over the world through telecommunication, television. Yes. So, anybody that is just popular on TV or in, you know, yeah. in the news, it's what people who regard to as authority, authority yes. or the best. True, true. And I used to look, see that here and teach in Russian, and my Russian people know what I teach them in mm -hmm. Russian, but not in English. Mm -hmm. And they cannot listen to those people. Mm -hmm. And I too know that when I begin to speak in English and when I begin to write in English, the only thing that will save anybody out there is that or people don't read, they don't get to read. Oh here. Yeah. Mm. But anybody who gets to read and read. Just check out. Yeah, they lose it. And that, that, and that is the truth. They lose it. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, I've told you this before. <laughs> I read your books, I listen to your messages. It's difficult for me to listen to another person. And that's the truth. Not because people don't have what they have. I mean, they're not saying something that's sensible. But I'm like, if I spend two, one hour with you, listen to your resources, to your materials, I mean, to take me like, <laughs> Maybe a month to learn that from other people, other people. Because I'm talking about how look at look at the way you are, gave answers to dreams. Imagine I'm trying to look for just your short answer, short reply about dreams. Imagine I'm beginning to now study books about dreams. And you might still not gather. Might not gather those that those that little information you gave right now. I mean the way you systematically answered it. I might not even get it from any book. Because we're not talking about several things that I mean that are not really practical and things are not in depth. So I'm, I can imagine you now converting that, like just talking about dreams, into a book. I can imagine the depth of the knowledge. I mean, I read that book and I'm like, I don't need another book about dreams again. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to read any other book about dreams again. This is what I need. Sure. Yeah, it's just like somebody called me yesterday. The guy is in uh, Oyakilo Ministry Church. in Nigeria. And he's one of the staff officers there mm. and he used to say he said he used to think that there is nobody to listen to in the old world apart from pastor chris mm. and he said a lot of people in their denomination they and their church, that's what they believe True. that they shouldn't even listen to any other person again yes so but should the mistake he, he made was he just tried once. somebody yeah just try once <laughs> That was it for him. That was it for him. <laughs> he started listening so much mm. that now he says he was he even telling himself, how could I have been following Pastor Chris. Pastor, this Pastor Chris? How? What, what happened? Who? What? Was I so dull? Was I so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was I so? I mean, I was so dead, brain dead. Mm. Was I so much brain dead that I couldn't? That I was even following this man. I couldn't think with my head. What was I using my brain for? Mm -hmm. 
Because he said, now that I listen to him, I see holes in everything he said. True. I don't know if you get yes, it. Yes, I get it. I get it. And that's how, that's how it is sometimes. I won't feel like I'm even being too critical with other people. After I listen to you and I just stumble on, on their messages of Pastor Chris or I stumble on I'm really poor what they his message. I'm just here and I'm like, no, what you're saying, sir. Yeah. With, with all due respect. You don't see all, with all the witnesses, no, all this. Yeah. No, no. This is not this is not it. This is not it. So So that's why I would normally keep quiet and don't talk about me myself. And you know, we are talking about this for the first time. It's happened that we are talking about it this publicly. publicly. But normally we don't even yeah, mention it. Yeah, because I just keep quiet because if you know, you know. know. Hmm? See if you know you know. No, for me it's a sad thing. Yeah. For me, it's a sad thing that the world is living in deception. Many. I know better and, and that uh, a lot of things that people are following. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, there's some food, some there's some food now they call MGO or yeah, GMOs. GMOs, okay. Mm -hmm. These GMOs are not real food. Yes. Yeah. They are chemicals. They are cancerous, yeah. And they will kill you one day. Mm -hmm. But they are the most popular food right now. Sure. They are the most widely distributed food. Mm -hmm. GMOs. Mm -hmm. Mm. They are the most popular True. because of marketing. Then mm. you go to any supermarket, it's a GMO you are going to find. In fact, for you to find uh, real natural food, mm. you have to either go to vegan or go to organic, mm. or you, otherwise you will not find it. True. That's the way I feel mm. when mm. I see people following all kind of people. Mm. Even when they talk about finances, people are mm. talking, everybody is a specialist. I'm mm. just looking. Until people come across my book, but they will make you rich, or they go to the city and say, Oh, she did it! <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? Zig Ziglar, you know Zig Ziglar? Yeah, yes, yes. He, he was one of the ones that had uh, that was able to go to my his partner, he and his partner. His partner actually wrote it, this thing I'm saying right now. It's written in my book, Money Will Make You Rich. You know what they said? Mm. That in every page of Pastor Sunday's book, will learn more secrets. Zig Ziglar is the highest mm -hmm. out there in those motivationals, yeah. financial yeah. trainings and industry training, Coca-Cola mm -hmm. training, whatever. He said, in every page mm -hmm. of Pastor Sunday's book, we learn more than in any book we have ever read of finances on the subject. Mm -hmm. Every page teaches more secrets mm -hmm. and more principles than a whole book, any book on the subject you find out. Wow. I think that's the way these messages are too. Wow. The man who did it was not ashamed, he put it down, written. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's not just a These thing. are not small people. Yeah, these are not small people. Yeah. <laughs> these are the best in the world. Yeah. Hmm. But even the publishers always tell me, don't write all these things in one book. Mm -hmm. These things you are writing, all this your book, they are too many. Make one book, all these secrets, they are too many. Make one of each one of your books should be 10 books. Mm -hmm. That's the way we do it in America here. Mm -hmm. Just put water in the rest. So you make a lot of money. Yeah. I, I, I think and you've, 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 shared, you've shared with us before the secret of all of, all of these things, and you've shared them in your books. Yeah, of how to. Um, and how to, how to, I mean, how to produce what you're producing right now. That anyone can do it, and everybody can do it. Yeah, but it's just, it just, I mean, just being willing to really pay that price. That's where a lot of, a lot of us really find it difficult. And um, also the fact that the Uncle Sam system really has, has people. limited people. It has really stifled. A lot of people's and, lives. Yeah, and they can't really. Even and people are rushing to it. And that's the amazing thing. In fact, some people are dreaming of getting a job. Employment, they call it. <laughs> they are looking for attachment. Yeah. And that's one of the things that. Whereby the, the, <laughs> the attachment <laughs> is, is what is what they need. Yeah. That's one of the words. Yeah, because I mean, that's one of the things that, that that's one of the the. The, the mind shift and the change that has happened to me also be, being with you because I mean I'm at that stage where I don't have I'm, I'm not yet in Uncle Sam and I'm not trying to be in Uncle Sam <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the, but the thing there is that you know working with you I've seen 
a model of what life, I mean, what real life is. And it's as though, it's just like the, the parable of the narrow way that very few will pass in and people discover. And then there is the wide way that a lot of people actually, are, I mean, they're all trooping, trooping into. And that's like now you understand way. Jesus. Yeah. That parable. Yeah. Because narrow is the way. Narrow is the way that leads to life. And then wide is the way that leads. Because the Uncle Sam system is like the default system. And that's what everybody, everybody is, following. is following. And then being with you, learning from you. And you t you've written a book about don't work for Uncle Sam. And I'm at that stage in my life where I'm, I mean, I'm at that stage where it's like, next stage is the Uncle Sam. <laughs> jump into the river. <laughs> yeah. About to jump in the river. Into the river. For the rest of your life. Yeah. So, I mean. I don't know if you were watching the program one day. One brother, I met him back about 15 years ago in England. He's based in London. Yeah. He called and he said he started participating in my mentorship mm. class. The mentorship program mm. and that just one month in the mentorship program has opened his eyes mm. and he called him and he was saying i have just discovered that me and you we don't live the same life oh. he said everybody i know they live the life that i understand mm. but this pastor something that i just discovered through this mentorship program it just got to me that ah, you are different though it's like they are different. It's a different life altogether. You are living, you know. True, true. You, yeah, yeah, you get, yes, you, I, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. But he it. saw it without even coming here. He just saw it just by by just giving yeah, what by mentor, mentorship. I I definitely agree with him because I mean, for him to to make that deduction and to come to that conclusion without even being with you here, I mean, that means he really cut it. He's a thorough guy. Yeah. Is it, I mean, that means he really cut it because. For just by virtue of my relationship with you, being here with you, I know for sure that you have the life that you are living, I mean, less than 30% of people are living that kind of life. I mean, there are very few people that, I mean, it's like you are living one life and the whole, the whole world living another life entirely. You know, Pastor, you said something one day that made me really realize that you really know what you're talking about. You told me that in one week, you were able to read over 50 books mm -hmm. about, no, was, it, no, no, no. was it one week oh, yeah that, it, it, that one week i was able to read one time 10 books one time 20 books or so. 20 books yeah. 25 books there about but one thing that you did that deal and i was like you came and you were like guess what I had my time my time yeah because and i could see the excitement that you had because I think that was the whole week I was not going anywhere. Yes, that week you were not going anywhere. That week you didn't have any court, anything like that. So you had your time. You didn't go anywhere. And no appointments. No appointments, nothing. You had your time. And you were able to read as many books as you desired. And I could just see the, I mean, you know that, that excitement that comes like a child. When a child is excited that, ah, I got this and I wanted it. I mean, I had my time. And you were telling me that and you were like, I mean, your time, when you're in charge of your time. And I could see the excitement in your face that ah, I had my time. But that life is what a lot of people don't have. Because, I mean, people, people are not in control of their time. It is Uncle, Uncle Sam that, is, that has, I mean, is in control of people's time. Tells them when to wake up, tells them when to go out, tells them when to come not back. They. No! Tells them when to wake up. Yeah. Tells them when to wake up. It informs them at the time they're going to leave their house. Informs them about the time they're going to have their break during the day. Informs them at the time they're going to come back home. Informs them about the time they need to sleep. Where they, to, they should travel to, where they should travel. Where they should travel to, what to do. I mean, it's, it is... If they should travel or they shouldn't. They shouldn't travel. So that's what Uncle, Uncle Sam system has done. It has curtailed their life in a way that... Imprisoned people. Imprisoned in prison lives that, they, I mean... They, can, they can't just say, okay, today I want to just be at home and have solitude. It's, it's impossible. Why? Because of this, of the Uncle Sam system, it has really, I mean, engraved and just encaptured the life of people. And that is the reason why, when that person, when that guy told you, yeah, I want to man, go back yeah, to that. Yes, yes, I'm mm -hmm. going to come back to it. So when the man told you that you're actually living a different life from what, what I am living, he knows exactly what he's saying. 
and you see, and he caught that picture that ah, this man is not. I mean, apart from the fact that you, the way, the way you think, the way you process life, like and like what I told you the last time I was in the show, that one thing I've learned from you, one of the three things I've learned from you is having an understanding of what life really is and how to maximize life. What what I mean, what does life contain? The science is, of life. The science of life. What is life about? And how do you really understand and maximize the life that you have? So you have an understanding of life that people don't have. And that's the reason why you can maximize your life and you can produce the result that you have. So when that guy said that, he, I mean, it was like a light bulb moment for him, that, ha, <laughs> this man is not living the same life I'm living. But he, because what he was saying is that if you are not careful, he said, because I've been listening to you on daily broadcast. Yes. And I say, oh, wonderful, great messages. I'm excited, you know. But it, it just, because of that mentorship, it started, which is more systematic. Systematic. It just said, ah, wait a this, if I just follow, if I just look at this band the way he's coming, smiling and joking and laughing and talking like, I think it's just a normal human being like me. <laughs> he would say that was even deceptive because yeah. you think that would be just the same. By just watching you, yeah. by just watching you, they just think that, okay, that's just Pastor Sunday. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they don't understand what it takes. For example, I've been, I've been where you are planning this series. For example, before any, before you start any series, people don't know that. But you work and you build the series from start to finish. Okay. <laughs> Already. Already. It won't be first time. People don't know that. They don't know that. But I've been there with you. We have worked together. And you, from start to finish, I mean, before you even start, and this is, this is, this is not like, okay, um, for example, you, you started the love series. And um, it's not like, okay, we're finishing the love series next week, so let's start preparing for the other one. You know? I mean, before, even right before the love series ends, that one's already ready. <laughs> like the next thing is already ready. I mean, they are all there in your program, systematic. systematic. So people will think. I mean, the viewers will think, oh, Pastor May maybe just does some quick research, some quick things, and just okay. comes, prepares some powerpoints, comes down the clock program, and he's just there, he's laughing, showing this thing. They won't understand the processes. I mean, the systems. <laughs> And you've, I mean, you've worked out to produce what you're, what you're doing. So that's what that guy is saying. Because the mentorship program, of which I have an idea of what it is, very systemic. Very systemic. I mean, even from the daily plan, I also worked on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, the word I don't say anything like that. They never. Uh, no, they must say it. They, they don't even. Know they don't know what the daily plan is. So they don't even know it's coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just those daily plan ah, for three. Six, So when that guy went through that program, that mentorship program, because that's, that will give a different, it yeah. gives a different understanding of how to, I mean, so the, this, these programs, you can be sitting down, you can be, I mean, there's no accountability, drinking tea. you can be drinking tea, you can be, you can be saying, Junior, where are you, come on, everything, but that mentorship program, I know some people that go into the they, they cannot even sleep. <laughs> she was telling me that, ah, and that is a light one, though, compared to what I did for my people here. She was like, ah, I've been on this, been on this. So, if, you know, out of the, maybe we started with about 500 people. Yeah. Out of the 500, the people that are giving exams now is just about 50. 50 out of 500. I can understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand. Because I, I mean, I, I've, I've gone through the mentorship. 50. I can understand. 50 people. Yeah, because. Out of 500. Who came to study? I, I mean, the pastor. <laughs> oh, Lord. I mean, you know, one thing you used to tell us that, that sometimes you see people that are going to school and you're like, do people really go to school? Yeah, for probably like a grandparents. Like, I mean, it's a low school. Do you people go to school? Uh, most of the people do yeah. yeah, because, I mean, many people that are going to that mentorship program and dropped that they went to school too. Yeah, and they, some of them went finished. They finished from school. Some of them will not have master, but they can't keep up. They can't keep up because, man, so thorough. So. I mean, anyone that is not... And they came by themselves. And they came by themselves. Yeah. And it's free. They said they want to learn. And it's free. And it's free. And it's free. At your pace. And they were hungry. Yeah. For God. At your, at your, at your pace. pace. Yes, at your pace. But now, at your pace. All the materials are there. Take them. And people are still dropping. And people are dropping out. 
So I'm going to post I'm very scared to most start. I'm not going to attempt to edit to let me most start the mentorship. Yeah, because people are, I mean, people are, people are really not, people are not willing to pay that price. Because that's one thing that, that I have realized. Because paying the price for greatness, only a few people are willing to pay the price. Only a few people. I mean, a, a huge amount of people that are living right now, they desire greatness, they want it. But when they just see just a, a, just an, just little of the price that people that are great paid, they are not ready to pay that price. It's just like, for example, people, some people are attacking me now about uh, me calling out people's mm -hmm. names and things. But I said, hey, wait a minute. This thing I'm talking about, I spoken, okay, just take one example. Mm -hmm. Don't even forget about the other one that you don't know. Go and listen to my message to the redeemed pastors yeah. in Amer North America. Yeah. Pastors, something. I don't, I'm sure you have watched it. Okay. There are two of them. Yeah. Okay. So, if you have watched that one, I spoke you want them the right? truth. Yeah, yeah. And I even told them, not just one, I gave, you know the way I yes. have always saw, I gave systematic steps mm -hmm. on how to be relevant. Yeah. They had the steps to take, to so take it. They did it. Yeah. So, why did they invite me? <laughs> Yeah, because if you invited me to come and help you be relevant, and I gave you the steps. Really, yeah. No, people are not trust. People are not really. I mean, they can want to like ah, I really desire. Yeah, we're quite emotional. But, I mean, we saw this practically even with your nine nine pm series. When we're thinking about this, when we when you're talking about the, the subject of love, where I mean that that it was, there, it's too difficult. It was too difficult. I mean, where I mean, we have how many people were watching live? Maybe four hundred or two hundred. But the moment you finish the love series, I went to the light one. And then when it, when you went to the light one, this one that is all that people are just sensational about. We were, I mean, <laughs> we we're getting nine hundred, close to one thousand views. Sometimes seven hundred, there about. Why? Because people are not really ready to pay the price. Because this one, nothing demands. Because this one, it's nothing demands from them. Now no, we're just talking about the. The, uh, errors of errors other people. Of other people. So people are ready to sit down. I've seen it in my, even in my show to pastor. My my value system show where I'm, where I talk about values. So I'm I'm there talking about responsibilities things. So I had an an episode where I was talking about how pastors have destroyed our value system till today. Is the highest. Is the highest. I mean that I had the highest amount of views, highest amount of of of, of shares, because th that show I wasn't and talking about anything from, from them. It's also about okay, these guys have destroyed our values. They see people care. But when you are talking about, about what real things that we need to do, they disappear. People are not coming. <laughs> for no, people are not interested. Because yes. life of most people are for biomasses. Yes. This whole world system has been set up in such a way that biomasses are fed with two things only mm. bread or food and entertainment. Mm. Mm. Just give them bottle so that they will not be hungry. Mm. And then entertain them where they can begin to use their mind. Just entertain them. Like give them some serials, mm. series of films or yeah, movies. Or, yeah, just make them feel laugh. Make them laugh, you know yeah. what they do in Nigeria now. That's what they're doing in Nigeria. They call it comedy. Comedy, yes, comedy. Yeah. Comedians. 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 They are the biggest stars in the country. Yeah, wow. comedians. Because that's just, that's how they are. Musicians are comedians. Yeah. That's how you make people fool. That's how you fool the whole country. That's how you make a whole country dull. So when you want to, that, what, what Hitler? This is what Hitler did mm. to make people not to control anything. Yeah. Just give them food, good economy. And then entertainment. Yeah. Finish. Mm. So even hosted Olympics and things like that. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. Okay. Just make people to laugh mm. and to have fun. Did they call it fun? Yeah, fun. Or to chill or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Chill out and chill out. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That is how you make people into animals. Mm. So when people are now telling me about there is something in Nigeria they call experience. Yeah, experience. I cannot buy into it, and I'm telling them this is rubbish. But they think, ah, that's why they're worshiping God. Mm. But they don't know that that is a system mm. of making them into bad 
True. Even though it's religious, mm. religion also is the same thing. Mm. Or Lolo Bobo Bobo. Or something. Yeah, Lolo Bobo. Yeah, all those things. I just, the thing is God, where I worship people. I think you cannot do it in your house. Mm. It's all about creating biomass. Yeah, and it doesn't make people really use their mind to think. Yeah. That's so true. And it doesn't have anything mind. to do with God. God is spirit and truth. Mm. So, what is that for? That's in the thing. No productivity. No conversion. Even no. What is the relationship with God? To see what the Father is doing. What are you going to see? Like, you are going to see the stars. Yeah. They are generated. Yeah. And that, and but when I talk like this, it's like I'm to come from another world. Another so, world. I just keep quiet. Yeah. So and people are not ready to receive. I, I read your book, Raising the Next Generation of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, and I told you that I was annoyed. At some point, I was really vexed because, I mean, all of those 72 hours of praise that Redeem organizes and all those experiences, they're just wasting people's life, wasting their destiny. Things that Things that I mean that has the potential of really, I mean, of creating and transforming a whole nation. A whole that world. book alone, you can. I don't care what university you finish. You have not touched that thing. Not just church. Mm. I'm only talking about university yeah. education. You tell me anybody that finished university and knows what is in what's that in that book. book? No. It doesn't matter if you finish America or London or England. Or so, I mean, you're really living it. You're living you're, the life you're living. I mean, your life is doing for, <laughs> for the life that the vast majority of people are living in this world. I mean, it's a, it's a this one I know it from your materials, but even much more, I know it from just being with you and looking at how you live your life. It's different. I mean, one thing that people don't know is that before you see Pastor Sunday, before, I mean, Pastor Sunday comes out after 12. You guys don't know that, but let me just tell you guys. <laughs> so before anyone says pastor, it has to be after 12. And the reason is because from the time you wake up till 12, there's nothing anybody, self-education. And family time. And family time. So family time and self-education. So after 12, then you can, you can see people. And even when he's only seeing people, he's doing his own thing. He's doing his own thing. Value. <laughs> I mean, either he's adding value to you, say, we're adding value to others. So, round the clock is all centered on value and on purpose. Imagine that kind of life. You wake up, it's value, purpose. Every second of your time. Well, I am surprised that people are not doing like that. No, Pastor, that's not how the life is. I already told you. That's not how life is. <laughs> you, know, you said something to me that really made me. I mean, you said something to me also recently that made me like just really be in control. You told me that, and my, and my son and Victor actually were here, and you said, never allow anyone dictate what you should do with your time. You must fight for your time and be in control of your time, even though you're in school. Because I'm doing my postgraduate course now, specialization. And doing that, yes. yeah, they might want to say, you come to this time, yeah, you must be here at this time, you must come here, you must do this. You want to control ah, your time and your life. That is sad. So sir, now it's as if now I'm a rebellious person. I do what I need to do. Before I tell him, sorry, I have to be here at this time. I have to go somewhere. I'm sorry, but yeah. I need to make this happen. Yeah. I'm in control of my time. I mean, you cannot come and tell me to do what. If I need to leave, it means you have become a human being. Yes. A personality. Where is it? I'm a person. I'm a personality. You have become a personality. A personality. Yeah. <laughs> I am a person and my personality. Yeah, I just tell them that. Sorry. Those are some of the things that make you to become. My personality. I just tell the professor, I'm, I'm so professor, I have to, I mean, I have to do something. And maybe if I, if I estimate my day and I realize that if I go to the hospital today, the time I'm going to spend in the hospital today, if I use it for another thing, I'll be more productive. I just tell them, okay, I'll just send a message or email. So I won't be around today. I need to do something. And if, before you are just going. I have to just go every day. I, have to, I mean, I have to just do what they want us to do. Sit down, sit down. Go, go. Do this. We have to be here at this time. Make sure you come. <laughs> so, you are not in charge of your life, of your own life. So, I I just to just wait to just finish from school and then leave the hospital and go back home and I'm in charge of my time again. 
So that's how people are living, Pastor. That's how people are living. And, um, and that's the reason why viewers, I mean, you need, you need to get all these books. You need to get all these books. Let's, let's review some of these books, Pastor. It's not with the one you are Pastor. Yeah. Because you became a personality now. Exactly. Well, I'm, I mean, the amazing thing is that the more, the more you learn, the more you become more of a personality and the more you begin to imbibe. Well, I remember your breakthrough, you know, when you started, right? That is the beginning of, of your of becoming. The, of becoming. And so it's a whole process. So this is a book that you guys want to get and read. I mean, yes, you're a person. Or are you a personality? And from this book, you would know exactly what makes a person a personality and how you can make that shift from being a bioman to being a personality please get this book please get the book i mean i'm really today's today's episode is just so wonderful i don't know i'm just i'm thrilled <laughs> i'm telling you talking about time what do you do with your time I mean, these are these are these are these are subjects that no one will tell you about. No one will talk to you about. This is not time management because yeah. whenever they hear time, they think it's time know. management. But no, conversion. <laughs> Investing your time, time investment. How can you time invest? Investment. Yeah, it's a whole. It's a new concept. I know that you might not have even heard about. So you want to get this book. You want to get this book. Don't join the bandwagon of people that are saying pastor is trying to to sell, sell books. books. Come on. Go and read them for free now. They are, they are on, on Kindle. Am, yeah, on Amazon Kindle. You can read them for free. for free. Yeah. So please get this book. This is one of my best books too. The Law of Difference. You have read it with it? Yeah. That's not that book. It's, uh, yeah. it's a book that one can never ever finish. No. Read. You have to keep, Just keep reading it. it. Yeah. yeah. I have it right there in my, in my book. In my bookstore. In my, in my room. It's there. It's a book that whenever you feel like getting yourself some energy, adrenaline again, you just go back to it. Law of Difference. But this is a book that you should have. I mean, you have to read this book. I don't know what. Uh, all of us on this book, you have to read. <laughs> I don't know you're going to do it, but you have to do it. Where are the heroes? Let heroes arise. Well, everyone sees Pastor Sunday as a hero. But the amazing thing about it is that there are processes, there are principles. And I'm sharing them. Yes. How to become, and how to become that. So if you see Pastor Sunday as a hero, so he's not saying, okay, I'm the only hero here and you all should be valiant and just be there. But no, he's saying, I'm a hero and you also can be a hero. And here, he has documented what it takes to be a hero. You don't want to miss out on this. Please get this and read it. The Danger of Monoculture, of course. This is Julie's favorite this, book. Yeah, Julie likes this book, yeah. yeah. And um, I haven't read this book, actually. By the time you read it, you will understand why. Why, right? Ooh. <laughs> Amazing. So, I think this book talks about how to, I mean, this book also, I don't know already, but I think it, it has to do also with, with difference. Yes, yes. It has to do with difference, yes. how to, to maximize the difference in, yes. in people and how, to celebrate. and how to celebrate people's differences. Mm -hmm. So, guys, get this book. I have, uh, this is one of my good books, and I'm, I'm, I hope I'm getting better, Pastor. It's been in the hair now. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting better, right? You're working on it intentionally. Yes, you're working on it intentionally, paying attention to everything I'm saying and it is Victor I need to work on more. Oh, this one, right? <laughs> I read this book actually, How to Be in Here and Now. And it's a book that I mean it will help you to actually maximize your life because a lot of people are daydreaming. That's one thing that you said in this book. That in this book that most people are just dreaming they dreaming through dream. life. Yeah, most people are they dreaming through life. And they never actually get to live they're not, even, they're not living consciously. I mean, they're not even awake. They're not awake, yeah. Yeah. So, please get this book, How to Be in the Here and Now. There is so many books you have to read. <laughs> read yourself of shallow-mindedness. Well, <laughs> there is no way you can be a solution to your world if you still have a thinking problem. You, you yeah. are think, talking about thinking yeah. problem. Our whole Africa is thinking Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a thing of the mind, actually. Mind, mind issues, I mean, um, the reason why we are backward is because of our shallowness. We are shallow, we don't think, we don't think things through, we don't think um, strategically, we don't think analytically, and that's the reason why we are where we are today. So, I mean, this is just a, a clarion call to everyone that read yourself of shallow-mindedness. This is another book I've, I've been able to read to, How to Live an Effective oh, okay. Life. Yeah. Amazing book. 
amazing book, guys. Get this book. You're going to see different meats. <laughs> like the title of the book, you see from the book, book um, chapters, you will be seeing meats, 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 meats that will destroy and you understand what life actually is. So, this is another book, How Africans Brought Civilizations to Europe. I mean, if you're an African, this is the book you want to read to, to understand the, the, the greatness that is in the African blood and how Africans actually have brought civilizations, not just in Europe, but even to Asia, to America, and great stuff that Africans have done. So if, this is a good book that Pastor, Pastor actually said that you have to get this book f for yourself, your children, your children's children, even to the fourth generation. <laughs> they have to get this book. No one is better than you. It's another classic. No one is better than you. This book would make you discover your uniqueness and also the uniqueness in others. So you know that no one is better than you. And even you yourself, you are not better than anybody. But everyone is unique. Everyone has greatness in them and everyone can do what they actually plan to do. Discover the source of your latent energy. Another great book. I actually worked on this book, but I mean, I think I was bringing out quotes from, from this at some point. And I, I was able to go through it and it was so fantastic. I mean, everyone is in need of energy. And that's the reason why we have a lot of energy drinks today, energy boost and things like that. <laughs> so, this is a book that you want to get. Someone, someone, someone used to call DSA genius. DS, genius DSA. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be a genius. This, I said Pastor Genius. Yeah, Pastor Genius. <laughs> yeah, I used, used to call him Pastor Genius. Well, the amazing thing about DSA is that he has been able to convert all of the knowledge that he has into a product that you can learn from and replicate. He has created this as a system that geniuses can be raised, actually. So please get this book, The Creative and Innovative Power of a Genius. Amazing book. Mountain of Ignorance. This is a book from an African mm. continent. Yeah, I mean, the greatest mountain that needs to be conquered in Africa is ignorance. As long as this mountain is there, there can't be any progress, really. So, as long as we are ignorant, we can't make any improvement. We can't make any progress. So, this book, The Mountain of Ignorance, is a must-read book. Please read it and get it. Pastor, face your calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pastor, face your calling. I'm sure Pastor wrote this because of his own personal experience. <laughs> Say, Mr. Man, keep short. I open Bible. I just talk Bible. <laughs> so yeah, but you're putting your mouth in politics and everything. But hey, this book will make you understand it. Nope. Never, re never restrict yourself to the pulpit. Now, nah. actually, the pulpit is not, should not be your own standpoint. You have to see the world, actually. You have to view the world. And Christians, actually, are meant to just not to be the salt of the church or the light of the church or just behind the pulpit, but the world, actually, is our stage. The world is our stage. The world is our audience. So if you're a pastor or you know anyone who is, I mean, limited, get this book for the person. Miles Moreau. This is a good book. I read this book also. It helped me at a very, very important time in my life. Mm. Why do people die? Why do good people? You know, it's a question people always ask. Why do good people die tragic deaths? Why? I mean, why? But it's good. Why does it? Why? Why did he die? This book will give you good answers. Yeah, and Pastor also documented some personal experiences he had with Dr. Miles Monroe and some of the things that he achieved with his life. Great book that you should read. My Nigerian people, why am I unlucky? This is a complaining. yeah, complaining, complaining, complaining. I mean, this book would read you off that life of complaint and make you actually realize that what you see as as a disadvantage, and you are saying why am I unlucky? You discover that there's actually treasure in it, and you can actually turn that tragedy or Convert that problem into a solution that will make you a hero in life. So get this book, How and Why Am I Unlucky. Very good book. This is one classic. I mean, this is one book that 
I mean, it gives in-depth understanding of what it means to live for the kingdom, the kingdom-driven life. Pastor said, um, and when you said you, 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 you went to the U.S. or something and then you saw people were talking about this book by reporting um, Purpose Driven Life and you're like, oh, there's something deeper than this, there's something deeper than this and then this is how you came up with the Kingdom Driven Life, the title and I read this book too, a phenomenal book this book will give you insight of what it means actually to live for the kingdom, amazing book, really amazing. That's why somebody said it's one of yeah. the top three. Yeah, this person said, I believe that this is one of the top three books written in the last thousand, thousand years. years. <laughs> yes, and the person said, I mean, in my opinion, it is definitely the best book on the kingdom of God. Yeah, I mean, one of the top three books ever written in the thousand years. That's fantastic. <laughs> And let's review the last two books here. Um, this book here is The Veritable Source of Energy. It's another book that also talks about energy for you to be able to tap into the source of energy. And I mean, from there, Pastor talked about today, when, when we started today's show, how is, how is it able to be led by the Spirit of God? How is it able to, I mean, follow the direction of God? And some people ask Pastor also that how come you're able to do this? Like, ah, don't you rest? Don't you? How do you do it? You're coming up at nine o'clock every day, seven o'clock every day. How? Where do you get your energy from? How are you getting your energy? <laughs> there is a veritable source of energy that you can tap into. So get it. And the last book is the Seven Tips to Self Fulfillment. Seven Tips to Self Fulfillment in Life. Well. You're going to get answers on how to fulfill in life. And this and many other books that you can get on Amazon, on Okada Books. Please do yourself a huge favor and get these books on Amazon or on um, Okada Books. And also you can listen to pastor's messages on Sunday at the Larger Official on YouTube. You're going to get a lot of products there. You can also get some of his articles on his blog, SundayAdelajaBlog.com. Free articles, mind-blowing, I mean, a lot of content there. And there we have it today. Today was amazing. I'm sure you guys learned a lot. Thank you so much, DSA. It's always amazing being with you. Thank you for the opportunity to learn and to work with you. It's such a blessing, and I don't take it for granted. Thank My you so honest. much, sir. All right, guys. Let's call it a day today. Thank you so much. DSA, give me final word. <laughs> Peace. Peace.